just look at me. I, I'm just giving you this visual demonstration here of what I look like. This is how I went to record store day today. <laughs> I didn't get up early, and I didn't go to record store this morning. Man. I got up, and I packed up my fishing stuff, and I went out to the lake fishing today. This is my fishing attire. I've got warm clothes on because it's colder than hell. And my long johns, my hat. You can see the sun, okay? A visual aid to what I look like during record store day to day. I went today after fishing. There was they got slammed today. Record store day got slammed. I walked in and the crates were about empty. I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, man. They got fucking hammered today. I seen Alec. He looked like he would just got done fighting Hulk Hogan, man, in the WWF. Alec being the owner of Omega Music in Dayton, Ohio, on 5th Street in the Oregon District. One of the best fucking record stores in the United States of America. I love that place, man. It's like... The vibe is just wonderful, man. It's wonderful. I always find great records there personally. It, it kind of feel it kind of meshes with my niche. But yeah, Alec, he was there. He said he was ready for a nap. I told him I said, Go go you need to go take a nap, man. <laughs> I like Alec though. Um I wanted to pick up I wanted to get the Jerry Garcia box set. Electric on the eel. They were sold out. I wanted to get the Beatles, the little Beatles albums, records, the little 45s. I wanted, I would have bought all of those. I figured those would be the first things to go. They were gone. Um, I wanted to get the Fields of Nephilim. It's kind of this gothic -y, progressive rock. I love that fucking group, man. They're great. I wanted to get that. They had some copies this morning. They were gone. So, I did pick up some stuff. I was looking through the records. Let me tell you a, a, a little story. I was looking through the records. And, uh, and I, was, I was just quickly going through. I was like, well, they don't have what I want. I'll see what they got. So, I was just going through them very quickly. Kind of focusing on jazz, you know, I was like, they got some good jazz releases today. I'll see if they've got some of that stuff left. And I ran across this live Ramones album. They had one copy left, and uh, it's like a white cover. I'm not a huge Ramone fan, okay, but I love the Ramones. I love, you know, I mean, they were fucking awesome. The fucking Ramones are awesome, okay. Now, I'm not a giant fan like Randy over at Dead Wax. He's a giant Ramones fan, okay? He could tell you all about the Ramones. Me, I just enjoy the music, okay? So I ran across this last copy of this Ramones album, right? So I grabbed it out. And I had me a nice little stack of records in my hand already. And one of the guys from the record, he had this lady with him. And he goes, did you get that Ramones in there? He goes, I said, yeah, I got it in there. He goes, and she was looking for that Ramones album. <laughs> I got the last one, right? So he looks through there and he looks at her and he's, she, he's like, uh, yeah, he got the last one. You know, and, and like I said, I love the Ramones, but I'm not like a huge Ramones fan. So I grabbed my Ramones. I said, here. You want it, you could have it. Said it's yours. You know, just because I'm that kind of guy. You know, nobody would do that. Nobody. You know, anybody else had that record in their hands, she would have been fucked. <laughs> so I handed it to her, right? Here, you can have it. She's like, oh, no, no, no. I said, yeah, you could have it. She was really polite. I could tell she was, you know, she was kind of like rich or something. She says, I don't want it. She goes, I'm getting it for my husband. She goes, my husband sent me down here to pick it up for him. 
So I said, fine, you could have it. I said, it's it's not a big deal. You know, you know, I love the Ramones, but I'm not, you know, if it was Randy, she would have been fucked. Randy would have been like, fuck you, bitch, this is going home with me. You know? <laughs> I mean, let's just face it. Nobody's going to give her something out of your head. You know, if you pulled it out, you're going to get it. You ain't going to give it away. So she was very kind, okay? And I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to tell you, okay? Because she was very, very kind person. And what she said was this. She says, she says, let me buy your records. She says, let me buy your records for you. Because I had a stack of records, you know? And I said, and I just looked at her, you know? And, I mean, and... And, and don't get me wrong, I'm very, I think it's very kind. But I also got insulted, man. <laughs> you know, I'm smell, I smell like a fish. You can't smell me right now, but I smell like a fish, man. I look like a vagabond, you know. I mean, look at me. She feels sorry for me, pities me. I'll buy your records for you. You know, I kind of felt insulted, even though I know it was an incredible kind gesture on her part, but I felt insulted at the same time. <laughs> like, motherfuckers, man. You know, you try, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. You know what I'm saying? So, you guys let me know in the comments. Do Am I overreacting to this, you know? And I do understand. I do look a little rough, you know? I've been out fishing all fucking day. So I gave her the Ramones. Probably should have kept it. No. I believe that I believe that you should be kind to the to the other creatures of the universe, man. You know, the spiritual beings, you know. Be put the energy, the positive energy in the world for people, man. It'll come back, believe me. That positive energy comes back as a blessing somewhere, sometime in your life. I promise you it will. So be kind to people. You know, if they want it, let them have it. You know, you know. I understand if it's like the only copy, and you're a huge Ramones fan, then I understand. I picked up. Fifty incense today. One of them is frankincense, and the other one I believe is amber. Man, these are fantastic incense here. I picked up 50 incense today because I'm getting low in the house. I'll show you what I picked up. Like I said, a lot of this stuff I just grabbed mainly because it was fucking jazz. I'm not a music expert. Man. Don't, I'm not going to get on here and act like I'm a fucking music expert. I just love music, man. I would rather be a music lover than a music expert. You guys... Or experts, I'm not. I picked this up here. This is Maul Waldron and Steve Lacey featuring Reggie's Workman and Andrew Cyril live at Antwerp. <laughs> Antwerp. <laughs> is this a jazz 2LP set? It's a gatefold. I haven't even opened it yet. It's kind of a blood buy. I guarantee this is a fucking great album. It was 50 bucks. I spent $300. I didn't spend a whole lot of money. But this was 50 bucks for this. But I just know. It's just I look at this. I just look at this, man, and I go, you know what, man? That's that's going to be a fantastic fucking spin. I know I'm going to fucking love it, you know? Jazz at the Philharmonic New York Volume 7. So it's the 70, 75th anniversary of the landmark recording master cut from the original analog source. Yellow vinyl. Featuring Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Flip Phillips, Roy Eldridge, Buddy Rich, Ray Brown, Tommy Turk, and Hank Jones. So this is this is me, man. When I see this old school, 
old school jammer here, man. I was like, oh yeah, that's that's gonna be another fantastic jazz spin, man. So um picked up the orb. They had the orb. I see this. I think this was the last copy they had of this. Um Holloway Brook. The Holloway Brook, the orb. Um it says an ambient excursion. I like the orb. I, I dig oh man. They uh they did a, a, a trick with uh, Lee Scratch Perry a while back, the orb, and I think it was a record store day, man. I fucking loved it, man. That was just a it still is a wonderful fucking spin. The orb is wonderful. I, I just love their style. They're like these these dudes are like my age, man, and they're still fucking doing it, man, and uh making some great music. So I see it. It's a record store day, you know it's gonna be fucking good, man. You know it's going to be good. And then I see this. Earl Hooker. There's a fungus um, among us. Yeah, there's a fungus among us. Earl Hooker, man. This is like some blues. I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I didn't do much research. I just went through there and just willy-nilly grabbed things. I, I think this is going to be a fucking great spin, man. This is another old-school blues jammer here, man. Um, I picked this up. This looked like a really nice set here, man. This looked really nice. This was Art Tatum. Jewels in the Treasure Box, 1953. Chicago Blue Note Jazz Club recording. And this says here that this is uh, recorded... Uh, bah, bah, bah. In, in Chicago. It was recorded live in Chicago. Recorded from the Blue Note Jazz Club in Chicago, March of 1953, um, with bassist Slam Stewart and guitar Everett Barksdale. So, this was like, uh, this has three LPs, man. Three LPs, tons of fucking music, man. Another old-time Jazz, you know, I love this old old school stuff, man. You guys can see it. I mean, all this stuff that I picked up is kind of old school, old school stuff. They had a Neil Young. I was thinking about buying the Neil Young. I ended up passing on the Neil Young. They had some good George Harrison releases. They had some in stock. I ended up passing on those. Those would have been a nice pickup as well. The Neil Young, I probably would have really enjoyed, but I ended up passing on. I might still pick up the Neil Young. If it's there next week, I might buy it next week. They had a Sunra, Pink Elephants on Parade. You know, and here we go with the jazz-themed, old-school jazz-themed Sunra. Fucking, you know, Sunra's wonderful. So I picked that up. And then I picked up Sunra live in Chicago, 1976 and 1977. Um, this is the two LP set. So I picked this up. I just thought, you know, this is this is another wonderful, wonderful spin. This was. This was 50 bucks. I mean, it's not that... I didn't think it was that expensive for a Record Store Day Sunra release. You know, it's something that I will enjoy, you know? Something I will enjoy. You know, you got to enjoy music, man. Don't be afraid to go out and spend a little money on yourself for some beautiful music, man. You know, we waste so much money on fucking bullshit. You know... Just there's so much stuff. I mean, and this is this is a hard copy of some beautiful music on vinyl. And I guarantee the vinyl on this stuff. You know, the new vinyl just sounds so good. I did catch some fish today. It was tough fishing. I totally switched up all my tactics. Like last week, the way that I was fishing to this week, I switched it up. I caught four fish today, but it was really tough. It was windy, so you could see the wind. It was sunny, as you could see the sun. It was cold. We got a frost advisory for tonight, man, in the weather. 
is crazy. I've I had to mow the grass yet again. It's like my fifth time this year mowing the grass. The grass keeps growing like crazy. I think it's raining fucking grass fertilizer, man. Because the grass is I've never seen grass grow like this in my life, man. But that's what I picked up. That's my record store day finds, man. Thank you all for hanging out, man. Brother Brian loves y'all. Be good.